Thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions, September the 30th, 2023. Going to look at Hebrews chapter 11, great, great chapter. Acts chapter 12, Psalm 110, Exodus chapter 7. Uh, yesterday, we read the 10th chapter of Hebrews. I love this. Chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. Therefore, therefore brothers, we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. We get to enter the, the presence of God, the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. In fact, it's where you live when you belong to Christ. By a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. He gave his body for us that opened the curtain into the presence of God where you live. I don't know if you understand what a great privilege that is, but it's where we live in Christ. It's where we live. Oof, never let go of that. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege of belonging to Jesus. Speak to us, Heavenly Father. Make us different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm hoping that my voice doesn't give me any trouble today. It's doing a little better. I think I'm making progress. Hebrews chapter 11. This is a great, great. This is the faith chapter. Heroes of faith. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed by God's command so that what is seen was made out of what was not, what was, of, was made out of what was, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Had a hard time getting that out. He made something out of nothing. Unbelievable. It takes faith to get to that, okay? By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, he still speaks even though he's dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away for before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, listen to this, without faith, faith means trusting in God in things that you can't see. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Parts of faith. You've got to believe God exists, that he rewards those who, those who earnestly seek him. He does. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. You know how long it took him to build the ark? A hundred years out in the middle of the desert. No water to float it in. Huge boat. But he did it by faith. Sometimes great things by faith take a long time. They certainly did for Noah. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his, inherit, as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Didn't even know where he was going, but he went where God told him to go. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. We need That's where we all need to be. Okay. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, he was 100 years old, okay, and Sarah herself was barren, she was 90 years old, was unable to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them welcomed from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People <clears throat> who, such, who say such things show that they are looking for a country of, uh, for a country of their own. Uh, if they have been thinking of the country they left, they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned, that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the de from death. 
By faith, Abraham, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, Joseph when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as Pharaoh's as, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be in, mistreated with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ. This, this is Moses. A couple thousand years before Christ showed up. I can't remember the date right now. More than that, I think. Close to a couple thousand. He, he, was, he, he refused to... He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ who came a couple thousand years later as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Ah, that's great faith. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were, who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and es escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced fears and floggings while, other while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death, by the sword, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. This world was not worthy of them. They wanted, they wandered in the deserts and mountains and in caves and holes of the ground, in the ground. These were, the, these were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. That's... And then Acts chapter 12. I, that's a great, great chapter. I was, while I was reading through that, I was thinking, man, I need to do a sermon series on that chapter. Faith. You no. Know, 12th chapter of Acts. I think I'm going to take my glasses off. It was about that time, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to see, seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by the four squads of four soldiers. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. They're having a big old prayer meeting for him. The night before Herod was to bring him on to 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 bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in a light in in a light shone in the cell. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. "Quick, get up!" he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and, he, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of the street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel to rescue me from Herod's clutches 
and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. When this dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people were gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was, so over, over, she was overjoyed and ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. You're out of your mind. I'm praying for him to be delivered, you know. She says, hey, Peter's at the door. You guys are nuts. You know, she says, they told her she's nuts. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. They said, oh, he must have been killed and it's his angel. Why didn't they think God might have answered their prayer? That's what I've always thought. But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. God answered our prayer. Don't be astonished. Expect it, you know. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what, it, what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him, he did not find him. He cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. That's what happened if you were guarding someone got out of your prison, you know. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there for stayed there a while. He had been uh, quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him, being secured, having secured the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king. They asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their, their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne, delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not a man. Listen to this. Immediately, Herod did not give praise to God. An angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Probably a good idea to give praise to God, you know. But the word of God continued to increase and spread. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem taking with them John, also called Mark. We assume that was the dude who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Psalm 110. Another one of the Psalms of David. Good old David, man. He did some great work in the Psalms. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. What that means is God says to Jesus... Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. At the day of the Lord, that will happen. Verse 2, the Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. You will rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle. Arrayed in holy majesty from the womb of the dawn, you will receive the dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. He's the Messiah. What that means the Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of, of his wrath. He will judge the nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from a brook beside the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. And then Exodus chapter 7. And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh. And your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you. And your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt. And with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. Did their best work after 80. I'm seven, soon be 75 in January. I'm thinking, yeah, God not done with me yet, you know. He can use, he can use old guys, okay. Old guys rule, man. I, I wear one of those hats sometimes. They don't really rule. Jesus rules. And, and and he can take old guys and use them. I love that. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform, mirac um, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. 
Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers and the e Egyptian magicians, also, who also did the same things as their, with their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, and as, and he goes out to and as he goes out to the water, wait on the bank of the Nile and meet him. Take with, take in your hand the staff that is changed into a snake. Then say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go, so they may go worship me in the desert. But until now you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. <clears throat> By this you will know that I am the Lord, and the staff that is in my hand will strike the water of the Nile, it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink and the Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff, stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and the canals, over the ponds and all the reservoirs, and they will, become, they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in the wooden buckets and stone jars. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials, and struck the water of the Nile, and all the water was changed into blood. The fish of the Nile died. The river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same things with their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his palace and did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the Nile. Pharaoh's like a lot of sinners today, stubborn, right? We just wouldn't turn from it. Well, let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. God, change our hearts by the uh, truth we find in your word. Apply it to our lives. Make us fresh and new and different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.